Okay. Well, thank you. Um, let me begin by apologizing for uh, not being there with the team. Um, but there's a paving project, if, for those of you who might not know that, here in Randolph. And um, so here I am on the other side of the train tracks. So <laughs> welcome. Thank you so much for joining us. Um, our first order of business, um, are there any guests here? Not today. Okay, great. Thanks, Felicia. Yeah, I might have to look to you to help me with that. Thanks. Um, mm -hmm. Our next order of business is to nominate and approve new members um, for the is the uh, the Randolph Area Advisory Board. Is that correct, Felicia? Randolph, yep, Randolph Advisory, or yes, for the Regional Advisory Board. Regional. Now, can we do that if they're not here, though? I think we can. Do we need them present? Because we have Rodney Rainville to. Um, nominate and approve to the board and Danielle Moffitt. We can do that. Okay, so I, I as think long as they've given you intent. They have or their supervisor has. Yeah. So I would say, yeah, let's go ahead and make that motion. Okay. If I could have a motion to um, elect Rodney Rainville and Danielle Moffitt to the regional advisory board. So I make a motion. Okay. Is there a second? I second it. Great. Um, any discussion before we take a vote? All right. There's a motion on the floor um, that's been first and seconded to uh, elect Rodney Rainville and Danielle Moffitt to our regional advisory board. All in favor, please say aye. 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 Okay. Any opposed? Fantastic. Thank you so much. Um, we'll now move on. Oh, this will be fun. A facilities update about the recent water fiasco. <laughs> oh, oh, it gets, it gets, we'll talk about that. Make the report. Yeah. Um, yeah, so we had uh, no school on Friday because we had a little blowout in the boys' bathroom. I'm not sure exactly what caused the pipe to burst, but um, it was at the end of the day, and thankfully we had one staff member still in the building who discovered the water traveling down the hallway. Um, so it was stopped fairly quickly, and I think because they got in there, the damage was minimal. Um, there is still some discussion about some of the walls and what might need to happen with them, um, but they've right now they're stretched thin, and, and so we're kind of in a holding pattern. Um, everything's usable. All our spaces are still usable. Um, so I think we're going to be okay. And it's something that can be probably remedied in the summer unless we end up with a mold problem. But I think they got to it quick enough that I don't suspect it's going to happen. But that's just me and my unexpert opinion. So, yeah. Um, the good news is, though, uh, I think it's an inspiration for us to continue the conversation around bathrooms which um, I know is a conversation that's probably happening across the district as well, or at least at the high school. Uh, we would love to make our bathrooms into single stall bathrooms. So the two bigger bathrooms, probably, if my calculations are correct, I think we could make six single stall bathrooms in that space. Um, so hopefully that's one of my goals in terms of facilities work for this summer. Great, thank you. Um, and Lane, just for clarification, did you want to hold on facility updates until your report, or did you want to tack on right now with um, with Felicia? It's kind of with related. Um, see if I can paint the picture just so folks are aware. Um, I don't know if it was 25 years or so ago. They put in a wood-fired burner um, out back to actually heat the heat the hot water that heats the high school, heats the tech center, everything's on forest hot water. Um, when they did that, they actually removed the oil burners, um, the oil boilers from this building and moved them into the same building that's actually out by the athletic fields where that, that oil burner is. Um, sure enough, the second the weather started getting colder, the main supply line for the water um, that comes to this building burst uh, the other day. And of course, it's buried under five feet of concrete, and then it runs under the back um, paved area out there. So they're scrambling around right now, trying to get the teams in to do kind of emergency repairs on it and see how bad that it is. Um, so we may have a couple of cold days. Um, 
you know, as, as this work is happening, but the goal is to have the work done as soon as possible, like within the next day or two. Do we anticipate any school closures with this? Okay, good. No, usually the buildings do pretty good. They, they can hold on to their heat for about three days. Um, you know, if you get really cold weather for more than three days, same thing in the summertime, if it gets really hot for three days, then on that third day, the temperatures start to change. Mm -hmm. But we are supposed to warm up at the end of the week because we've got the hurricane headed this way. Right. Um, and so that, that may, may help us get through this. Um, but it brings along a bigger kind of discussion issue that was brought up at the last open forum is the idea that, you know, we do have this aging building. I mean, this is not the first water leak we've had just because the pipes are so old in this 70-year-old building. We typically have two or three a year um, over the last three years. Um, and so, you know, we've had some discussions about the possibility if the legislature follows through this season, they're supposed to get a study report in and, and hopefully see some motion on it to actually set aside some matching funding to help schools either renovate or, or rebuild. Um, if that happens, I'm going to start a very hard push to get both of these buildings replaced um, because we're going to be seeing repairs like this repeatedly. And a lot of the stuff that they have to get to, especially with the water pipes, is buried deep in the walls, or it's actually under the foundation within the building, and they have to come in and actually tear up the foundation within the school uh, to get to where they need to go. And I think, like, at least for RTCC, what we're finding is, I think probably electric is a, a big one for us. Plumbing is as well, but yeah. in terms of electricity, mm -hmm. to keep in line with the industry, um, we are trying to retrofit an old building with new stuff, and it is just super challenging. Um, so the goal of Tech Ed is to stay current with what's in industry, so that presents more mm -hmm. and more challenges every year as we get more high-tech equipment. So. so we've got, it's kind of a, it's a bigger discussion too, because you know, we try to we try to renovate to keep things up, but at some point in time, if we're actually thinking of, of changing and, and rebuilding, you know, some of the renovations may might be appropriate to put them on a hold just to save yeah. the money um, and be able to apply it towards towards the rebuild. And I think um, that's where I'm at. Is you know, I want to know. I think it's hard for me to know what which direction to move because we're yeah. right on that line where it's like something's got to happen. And, they, <laughs> and one of the things I was actually hoping for, we were scheduled, scheduled in October for the PCB testing, mm -hmm. right? You know, if we had hits on the PCB testing, that was Brookfield and here, these are the two older buildings um, that they would have done that testing. They bumped our testing out um, from October to sometime in 2025. Oh my God. Um, so it would have been nice to get, and I'm, I'm almost at the point where I may pay to have the testing done myself just to get the impetus and the sense of urgency around getting the building done. Yeah. But all of it's going to sit and wait to decide what happens during this legislative session. Yeah. Um, if they pass, pass that matching funds, I'm not going to go to the community and ask for everything straight up. Right. But, you know, if we get a 30, 40, or 50 percent match, it's worth doing. Yeah. Okay. yeah. Absolutely. So that was my piece. Well, thank you, Lane. Um, before we move on to the next agenda item, are there any questions for Lane or Felicia um, in, around the facilities? Okay. I'm going to assume, and Felicia, just you know, Keep say going. something if somebody there said. <laughs> I will. Can you okay. hear? You can hear us okay, though, right? I can hear you perfectly. Okay, perfect. Yeah, thanks. Um, so then we're going to move on to your recruitment. Sure. Activity. Sure. So. Um, if you were here, I would give you this lovely little brochure. <laughs> um, but these have gone out in the mail to every student that's a freshman, sophomore, or junior in our partner schools. Um, this last, over the last two weeks, we've been visiting our partner schools, feeding them from the food truck, and telling them a little bit about um, what we have to offer at the Tech Center. The first deadline for applications is December 15th, so that's... Um, for those of you that have historical history, you know that that is a lot earlier than it was before I started here. Um, when I started here, recruitment happened in March, and a lot of times there wasn't really a clear understanding of which programs would be full by the time contracts were issued. Um, but this is also a direction that a lot of CTE centers are moving with fall recruitment, at least in Vermont. Um, so that's going well. We have the first week in December is going to be our showcase visits. And the second, uh, the Tuesday thereafter, which I think the date is the 13th, I want to say, we have our career night, which is an opportunity for parents and prospective students to come visit. 
They'll see the programs they're interested in, the parents get to ask all the questions, and we help them with their applications. Um, so we have assistance right there to do that. And uh, yeah, so by the next meeting, which is in February, I should have applications in. I should be able to tell you a little bit more about what next year looks like. Thank you, Felicia. Are there any questions around recruitment efforts? All right, well then we'll move right on um, to the enrollment. Sure, this is a quick one. So current enrollment is currently 148. That's not including Raven. Um, and I'm just going to, you want me to just keep moving forward? Yeah. Okay. So I want to move into the budget discussion um, for next year. For those of you that are not aware, there's a lot of discussion in the legislature this year around funding career and technical education. Uh, also about our governance structures, so I will keep you posted as I learn and hear more information about that. Um, but currently, the way our funding system from the state revenue is is calculated, it takes our three or yeah, I, I call it our three-year average, and um, calculates based on that. So what happens is a year like this year, where I have 150 kiddos. I'm only getting the finances from the state for 120. So um, it, it creates this sort of anomaly. And, and they did it, I know their, their intentions were good, they did it initially so that there wouldn't be a real dip and dive with local school business or school districts yeah, budgets. They were anticipating during the years of rapid decline in the state. Yeah. So they were trying to moderate that, but they never took into account what would happen if you didn't get a decline. <laughs> yes, what happens if it goes yeah. up. Um, so the good news, though, is that, you know, I think we're going to be getting a, a better chunk of change next year. So that's, that's really helpful because um, we have some work to do. And one of the things that we need to work on is improving our academic proficiency. It's been noted not only in our data from the state, um, but just in our uh, empirical data, we're going to call it. And 30% of our Perkins plan needs to go towards that means. So right now, uh, I have just submitted the Perkins plan finally after all of that CLNA stuff. Thank you all for all the meetings. <laughs> um, and we're at a point where we're just kind of waiting to get that approved. Within that, I am hoping to get an interventionist, and I know they are extremely hard to come by right now, but um, I think that we have some real specific work that needs to be done with some of our kiddos. So I'll keep you posted on that. Um, yeah, and I think the only other thing I would say, because I need to spend 30% of our Perkins plan on that, it means that we may have to put a few more things into the budget. Namely, we have a portion of two positions currently that are in the Perkins plan that will need to go into the local budget. And we also have the dental assisting instructors position, which will need to go into the budget. So right there, we're talking about an increase of probably 150,000. Um, but I think, again, I feel confident it's probably gonna be offset by the state revenues. Um, and I'll know more as we get through this process. Questions for me on budget for 24? All right. Okay. There's nothing in the room for questions, Felicia? You know, don't you know see that. any. No, I think we're... Okay. All right. All right, well then why don't you just uh, maintain your speaking uh, part here if you have any update um, from report from our director. So I think I already sort of said it. My, my report would be congratulations and thank you. We got the CLNA done um, <laughs> and it's in. And the Perkins plan has been submitted for approval. Um, that's been a big one that's kind of been hanging over. And I think um, just to give you some perspective, we had a lot of staff turnover in the last two years and to go through such a process with um, folks that don't have the historical perspective is really challenging. <laughs> so um, I'm just really thankful to be through that. So that's all I've got on reporting. Yeah, for, for me, just uh, 
on the, the superintendent side, in addition to the heat, just an awareness is we're kind of in the budget season, a um, little bit behind on things just because everything's been happening in the district. But we're looking just because of inflation at a 10 to 20 percent increase almost across the board um, in some areas of the budget more than others. Um, and so it's going to be a rough year. Um, I think it's just going to be one year, um, but we're going to have to take those things into account as we're going into the budget season. And pe people need to know it. Um, yeah. Yeah. You know, we may have to make some, some tougher actions um, that we normally wouldn't just to try to get things through and be fair to the taxpayers and the teachers and everybody else. So. Yeah, and I guess along that line, you know, what's challenging is when you're tuition based, uh, the, pro the academic teachers don't bring in revenue <laughs> you know what I mean like they their uh, a program instructor kind of pays for itself um, so it, that's where the tuition increase comes from is if we really do um, try to make sure that we are fully staffed where we need to be with academics um, it could be a, a couple positions so are there any questions um generally about the reports or about the finances. I know the financials were emailed out. Folks have a question about that. All right, well, we um, then are gonna move on to the consent agenda. And this is the minutes of October 12th. Um, if there are no questions, I would take a motion to approve the minutes of October 12th. I'll make a motion to approve the minutes from October 12th. Thanks, Sarah. Is there a second? Uh, Thank you, Maggie. Oh. Oh. <laughs> yes, okay. So we'll take that to vote. Um, all in favor of approving the minutes as presented, please say aye. 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 Okay, any opposed? Great, thank you. So those are passed. Um, and I guess before we and the meeting, are there any other questions from the group? I think this is gonna be short and sweet. Thank you all, I appreciate all right, well, it. Felicia, I did have one question. Where oh. are we with the dental program? I yes. know we were, last time we met, you talked about the situation with the instructor. Yeah, so, um, yeah, thank you for that um, question. Right now, we have an amazing young dentist who has decided to be um, a part of our team for this year and is working hard on developing curriculum for us. And she is also going to, her goal is to have that program accredited by spring. So she is on a one-year emergency license. Um, I wish I could keep her forever, but she really does want to go out into the field. Um, but she's doing an amazing job with the kiddos, and she's already using the equipment that did not get used a, a lot last year, and um, it's pretty awesome. So we'll keep you posted. Hopefully in February I can tell you a little bit more, um, but I know a big piece of that accreditation process is having your curriculum pretty sound, and, and she's working tirelessly on that. So. So that so we are funding that through the Perkins. So that one is actually through the time grant. Good question. Um, so she was getting paid as a sub until we got through the licensure piece, um, and then now she will be able to be paid through the time grant because that's we had to make sure we had someone that met all of the requirements for the AOE, um, and she does. Yeah. Awesome. <clears throat> and good news is we also already have inquiries about next year. So um, we put letters out to anybody that had a CDA, and we had about three responses um, from people that wanted to know more. So I think that's positive. I feel like we have put the feelers out there for next year that um, we'll get a qualified candidate. So. How's the new staff uh, fitting in or settling in? Good. It's been about, what, two months now since yeah. we started? Yeah, it's been a, a great start to the year. Um, it sort of feels like um, everybody's settling in pretty good. I think, you know, there's always that, the November is kind of like a, and if you're in education, you know, it's kind of like this 
hurdle. I don't know how to describe it any other way. And then it kind of settles off. And the kids generally tend to settle into their programs around that time. Um, so, you know, there's been some movement of kids and, you know, some growing pains of just kids testing instructors based on, you know, like, they are not their teacher from last year, you know, so right. <laughs> there's all that. Um, but all in all, I think um, most of our instructors are doing quite well. Good. Yeah. Well, thank you, Lane, and thanks, everybody, for coming out this evening. Um, I'm going to be happy to have all this new pavement around us, yeah. <laughs> I guess, in the, in the right spot. For I wish they piece. did more. <laughs> uh, right? Yeah. I wish they'd come on East Bethel Road. That would be even better. But, um, so on this, if there's nothing else, then I guess we will look forward to reconvening um, on February 8th, 2023. And um, my wish for all of you is a happy, healthy holiday season. And thank you so much. Thank you, Ashley. Thank you. Bye, Bye, everyone. Thank you. And you're welcome to take, oh, good, everybody did. Yeah. Those are for you to yeah. peruse. I'm going to apply. I'm you going to apply? Yeah. <laughs> what program are you going to do, Sam? I'm excited, yeah. Yeah? There's so many. Adults have